today I've got a pretty interesting problem to show everyone. So let's see the setup. The setup is quite lengthy, but the problem is pretty cool, like I said. So for n distinct positive integers, each of their pairwise sums is considered. And then for each of these sums, we write the number of the original integers that properly divide this sum on the board. And by properly divide, I mean it divides but is not equal to. And then our final goal is to determine the maximum possible sum of the numbers that we've written on the board. Now, before we get started, I'd like to point out that there are exactly n choose 2, in other words, n times n minus 1 over 2, total pairwise sums. And that's because creating one of these pairwise sums is equivalent to taking a two-element set from an n-element set. And let's also notice that the pairwise sums need not be distinct. It's, it's possible to have repeated pairwise sums. Okay, so let's do an exploration example first, and after we do this exploration example, we'll like maximize this problem and then show that we've indeed achieved that maximum via our example, uh, and that'll really finish everything off. Okay, so let's say our original numbers are the numbers 1, 2, 4, 5, 6. So let's see, that's five total numbers, which means we should have five choose two pairwise sums, but five choose two is exactly 10. So we should have 10 pairwise sums. So we first have one plus two, which is three. And then next up we have one plus four, which is five. And then next up we have one plus five, which is six. Next up, one plus six, which is seven. So that's all of the pairwise sums that include the number one. And then we'll have two plus four, which is another six. Two plus five, which is seven. We have two plus six, which is eight. And that's everything that includes two, but not one. Okay, then we have four plus five, which is nine. Four plus six, which is 10. And then five plus six, which is 11. So those are all of our pairwise sums. Now for each of these pairwise sums, what we will do is count up how many of the original numbers properly divide this. So notice three is properly divisible by one. So for three, we have the number one. 5 is properly divisible by 1 as well, and nothing else. Notice it's divisible by 5, but we're looking for things that are divisible but non-equal. Then 6 is divisible by 1 and 2, so that means we put 2 for the sum 6. It's again divisible by 6, but not properly divisible by 6. 7 is only divisible by 1. We've got 6 again, which is uh, two things are divisible by 6, or 6 is divisible by two things. And then let's see. We have another copy of 7, which gives us another 1. 8 is divisible by 1, 2, and 4. So for 8, we put the number 3 down. Then 9 is only divisible by 1. 10 is divisible by 1, 2, and 4. 5, so that gives us another 3. 11 is only divisible by 1, so we get another 1 for that. And now let's add all of these up because that's sort of our final goal of this whole setup is to add all of these numbers here. So if we add all of these numbers here, we get 1 plus 1, which is 2, plus 2 is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 11, 12, 13, 16, so we add them all up and we get the number 16. Okay, so we've done an exploration, and now let's present an example that will maximize this final sum. Okay, so now, like I said before, we're gonna look at an example where we maximize this final sum. So by the final sum, I mean after all of these steps have occurred. And like, I'd like to be motivated here by the following fact. And that is that 2 to the a plus 2 to the b, where a is strictly less than b, is properly divisible by 2 to the, let's see, j with j less than or equal to a. 
So in other words, if you add two powers of two, you get something that's divisible by a bunch of powers of two. And two isn't really special here. You could also take powers of three or other things as well. Okay, so let's use this motivation to consider the following set of n numbers, or maybe list of n numbers. Two to the one, two to the two, two to the three, two to the four, all the way up to two to the n. So notice that's n numbers. And now we'll form all of the pairwise sums. So let's start with forming the pairwise sums that start with two to the one. So we'll have two to the one plus two to the j, where j comes from the set, two up to n. Great, and so that's like one family of pairwise sums, the ones that start with two to the one. And then next we'll have two to the two plus two to the j, where now j will run from three up to n. So again, that's another family of pairwise sums. And then going all the way down, or maybe before we go all the way down, let's write one more. So two cubed plus two to the j, where now j runs from four up to n. And now we're gonna go all the way down to two to the n minus one plus two to the n. And I guess I don't really need a j runs from something to something here. j is essentially just running from n minus one to n minus one. Okay. So now let's make two charts here, or two more columns. So this is gonna be divisible by certain powers of two from our original list, but that means that we're going to write down a certain number of numbers. Okay, so let's see what we get out of this. Well, so two to the one plus two to, two, two to the j from our original list is only divisible by two to the one. So each of these are divisible by two to the one. So that means for each of these sums, we'll write down the number one, but we'll write down this number one n minus one times. So n minus one times for each of these sums. Now let's look at each of these next sums. So each of these is divisible by two to the one and two to the two. And so that means we write down the number two, but we write down the number two n minus two times. So here we have two n minus two times. And then likewise here, this two cubed plus two to the j is divisible by two to the one, two to the two, and two to the three. It's divisible by three things from our original list, which means we're gonna write down the number three and we're gonna do that n minus three times because there are n minus three possibilities for this j. And this goes all the way down to two to the n minus one plus two to the n. And here, this is divisible by two to the one, two to the two, all the way up to two to the n minus one. Well, that's n minus one numbers. That means we write down n minus one, but we're only gonna write that down one time because there's only one such um, pairwise sum like this. So now let's look at what the total sum is. And we can calculate the total sum fairly easily using like some summation rules. So we'll take one times n minus one, two times n minus two, three times n minus three, all the way up to n minus one times one, and we'll add all of those numbers together. So in fact, that'll be the sum as m goes from one to n minus one of m times n minus m. So something like this. But now here n is a constant with respect to this sum, so we can bring it out of the first term, leaving us with the sum as m goes from one up to n minus one of m, and then from that we subtract the sum as m goes from one up to n minus one of m squared. But the sum from one to n minus one of m, that's a triangular number, and then the sum, 
And then the sum of the squares is also a well-known number as well. I'll let you maybe fill in all of the details, but what we end up with here is n minus one times n times n plus one over six, which is equal to the binomial coefficient n plus one choose three. And now we'll claim that that is the maximum possible sum. So we've achieved this maximum possible sum via this example. And I'd like to really point out here that this example is really motivated by this divisibility property here that we get by adding powers of the same number. Okay, so let's get into showing that this is a maximum. So as we motivated on the last board, the maximum possible sum of this whole scenario over here is n plus one choose three. And we're gonna present a proof of this final result by induction, although I bet you could do a combinatorial proof since that we've got a binomial coefficient over here. Maybe if anyone wants to sketch a combinatorial proof of you know, this result you know, without using induction in the comments, go ahead. I think that would be a nice addition to the discourse. Okay, so let's look at our base case. So our base case will be the case when n is equal to one. So in other words, we're just putting one number on the board, which is allowed because it says for n distinct positive integers. So this would be one distinct positive integer. But this case is not super interesting because let's notice there are no pairwise sums because there's no pairs to make. But then that means that from that, we don't write any numbers on the board. So no numbers are written on the board. So that means our final sum of everything will be equal to zero. But notice zero is equal to two choose three. One plus one choose three. Some binomial coefficients are equal to zero, and this binomial coefficient is, so that satisfies this setup that we have. Okay, so now let's make an induction hypothesis. So suppose this is true for k positive integers written on the board. Okay, and then let's consider a list of k plus one integers. And I'm gonna order them, and I'm gonna order them as follows. So A1 is the largest, it's bigger than A2, which is bigger than A3, and so on and so forth. AK is the next to smallest, and AK plus one is the smallest. Okay, great. And from here, we can break down our sum into parts that only include a1 to ak, and then parts that include ak plus one in two different ways. So let's do that. So notice our final sum. And so by final sum, again, I mean what we get after doing this whole process that's in the statement of the problem. So our final sum will break into some parts. And so that'll be the sum from a1 up to ak. And so that would be the parts where we only consider pairwise sums from a1 to ak, and then we only count the numbers a1 to ak that divide those pairwise sums. Okay, and then we're gonna break into two ways that ak plus one can be involved. And this would be first, the number of pair wise sums of a1 to ak. So those are like the original numbers and then divisible by ak plus one. Where when I say divisible, I mean properly divisible just because that's the setting that we're working in here. Okay, so that would be one way of including ak plus one. And so that way is we have original pairwise sums and we're just looking at divisibility by this new number. And then the other way is to look at pairwise sums built out of AK plus one. So that'll be what we have here. So from the pairwise sums, which are A1 plus AK plus one, all the way down to AK plus AK plus one. So from those right there, Okay, great. 
And now I'm gonna leave you like a tiny bit of a detail to fill in right here for this one. And that will be that only AM, so only AM can properly divide AM plus AK plus one. And that's because of this ordering that we've created here. Anything else doesn't have the possibility of properly dividing. So that tells us this number right here. Well, the number of things that could possibly divide A1 plus AK is just A1. A2 plus AK is just A2, and so on and so forth. And now we're ready to do our final calculation. So that'll be an inequality. So from our induction hypothesis, the sum that comes from this K element set is less than or equal to K plus one, choose three. Great. And then the best that we could do over here, or the biggest that we could do over here, is that all of the pairwise sums are divisible by AK plus one. But we know exactly how many pairwise sums there are, and that's K choose two. And you know, that's by this fact over here, which we previously discussed. And then finally, since only AM can properly divide AM plus AK plus one by this little bit of a homework exercise, that means that at most we have K numbers from this setup right here. So the, but K is the same thing as K choose one. So now we've got the sum of these three binomial coefficients, but from well-known binomial coefficient identities, this adds up to k plus two choose three. But that gives us the exact inequality that we need. We have our final sum is less than or equal to the k plus first version of our binomial coefficient. So we were up to our ears with binomial coefficients in this video. So I did an intro to proofs class on my second channel, which is ad free by the way, Patreon supported. Help us out on the Patreon if you wanna keep that ad free. But anyway, back to it. If you'd like to look at some more in-depth, simple explanations involving binomial coefficients, you should check out some of the videos from that intro to proofs playlist. And that's a good place to stop.